This module will talk about ventilation and its importance to the air quality in a home. Ventilation refers to the exchange of indoor and outdoor air and it is typically done to make sure that the air inside a home is fresh. Uh, there are many different factors that can affect the need for and the amount of ventilation in a home, uh, but without proper ventilation, a uh, well-insulated home uh, could be airtight but seal in harmful pollutants such as carbon monoxide and moisture that can damage a house. Uh, so that uh, leads to a better explanation of why ventilate if we went through all this trouble to make sure our house was air sealed, uh, why would we go ahead and uh, ventilate it? Uh, well, first of all, tighter homes are much more susceptible to indoor air quality problems, including carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and moisture and condensation. Uh, leaky homes uh, don't provide dependable volumes of fresh air. It can be very high in some conditions, like when it's cold outdoors. Um, and very low in other conditions, conditions for, one, for example, when it's mild or when there's very little wind. Uh, leaky homes also tend to be overventilated in some places and underventilated in zones that are fairly airtight. And finally, homes that are tight uh, but ventilated will still use less energy than leaky homes, even taking into account the extra energy that's being used for ventilation. There's a couple different forms of ventilation that can be used to make sure there's enough fresh air in a house. Uh, one of them is natural ventilation, which is sort of uncontrolled natural air movement through doors and windows. Uh, it's used uh, most commonly and it allows fresh outdoor air to replace indoor air in a home. And it's usually found in older homes, although, although some newer modern homes are reintroducing passive ventilation and natural ventilation uh, as a way to reduce energy costs and still introduce fresh air. Spot ventilation refers to controlled air movement in localized places like exhaust fans to remove pollutants and moisture uh, right at the source. Uh, common examples include range hoods over stoves or bathroom exhaust fans. Uh, spot ventilation is typically used in conjunction with other strategies and it can be used to improve the effectiveness of natural ventilation. Uh, if both spot and natural ventilation do not meet the overall needs, then additional uh, ventilation strategies can be employed. And one of those might be a whole house ventilation fan, uh, which entails using uh, one or more fans and ducts to exhaust stale air mechanically and supply fresh air into the house. Uh, this is typically done in a method that's controlled and uh, made to be uniform throughout the house, uh, or it might be uh, just an exhaust fan that relies on the leakiness of the house to provide a source of fresh air. Ventilating indoor moisture is another important reason to make sure there's a significant amount of ventilation in our homes. The materials used in a new building, for example, a 2,000 square foot home, can contain up to six tons of water that must escape and evaporate over the first year. Uh, this is in the wood framing and the drywall materials uh, in particular, and uh, if the house is too tight, it'll take long for that to evaporate and even cause some problems early on in the construction, uh, early occupancy of the house. Um, our inhabitants uh, introduce moisture when they cook shower, uh, do laundry, uh, even just breathing and perspiring. Uh, in that method, a typical family adds about three gallons of water per day to their indoor air. A uh, clothes dryer, if not vented properly, uh, can introduce a significant amount of moisture into a living space as well. So looking at some different ventilation methods, a bathroom fan is most common and sometimes it's the only method of mechanical ventilation found in an older home. Uh, a couple nuances that you should look for to make sure that it's being done uh, properly is we want to make sure that the fan itself is caulked around the perimeter and when it's not running it doesn't leak air up into the attic space. I uh, want to make sure that the the ductwork that's used is hopefully rigid and that the turning radiances aren't too tight to make sure that the fan can work uh, properly. There might be condensation inside the pipe, so when possible it should be sloped away from the fan uh, to avoid condensation running back into the vent. And if possible, 
uh, we should use smooth, large duct work uh, and exit the opening straight out to make sure that we have good airflow through the fan. Um, it's also important that on the outside of the house there's a backflow preventer so when the fan isn't running uh, it's less likely that air will be blown back into the house um, or escape uh, through just a natural leak. Kitchen ventilation fans are fairly common. They can exhaust moisture as, moisture as well as fumes that uh, are being introduced in the kitchen. Um, these also should be installed according to the recommended instructions. Uh, smooth duct work with uh, turns that aren't too sharp can make sure that these don't get clogged and that they work properly. Um, also, a backflow damper is an important piece of this type of fan because it'll reduce the amount of just natural heat flow and, and air loss uh, through the fan unit when it's not running. Um, a backflow preventer looks something like this, uh, and when the fan is running, it blows the door open, and when the fan is not running, those doors fall shut and help block the passage of air and air leaks. Attic fans are an important tool. They are intended to cool hot attics by drawing the cool air uh, from the outside attic vents into the hot attic uh, and they push that hot air outside. They're typically controlled with a temperature sensor and they only run in the summertime. Mm -hmm. If your attic has block soffit vents uh, or is not well sealed from the rest of the house, this attic fan can actually suck your conditioned air up out of the house and into the attic. Uh, this will use a lot more energy and make your air conditioner work harder and really increase your summer electric bills. To prevent this, uh, you should follow the air sealing and insulation strategies uh, and uh, make sure that the attic is well ventilated using passive vents and natural airflow so that this pressure created by the attic fan doesn't suck the cooling up into the attic. Here's a picture of an installed attic fan uh, and also an alternative form of attic fan with a solar control. In this case, when the sun's out, uh, the fan runs on the solar energy and that's well aligned with uh, when that attic would be getting hot uh, anyway. And these are commonly used in retrofit conditions when it might be challenging to get electricity to the particular spot in the attic that you would like to ventilate. Whole house fans are a great tool to introduce cool air uh, in the summertime into the house and exhaust hot air. Uh, they're a wonderful uh, technique when you live in a place that it gets cool in the evening uh, and hot during the day. Uh, and the fan typically will suck air out of the whole house and uh, up into the attic where it's vented outside and will create a draft that allows air to be drawn in through open windows. Uh, one of the caveats of these is that uh, when they're not running, uh, they can be a huge source of air loss up into the attic, so they should be well insulated, much like the attic hatch is insulated. And some newer models actually come with doors and insulation on them, and when they're not in use, they can be uh, well insulated and well sealed. Uh, this is a picture of an actual installed house fan and a new modern version that has insulation built into the doors. Energy recovery ventilators or ERVs can be used to provide fresh air in a home and they're typically found in homes in which extra care has been made to build a well insulated and airtight home. They're also a popular device that's used in homes that have hydronic heating rather than forced air heating uh, because there's otherwise not a lot of air moving in the house. Um, as the name implies, uh, an ERV is designed to recover heat from the inside of the home. And the way this works is that as fresh air is sucked into the home from the outside, uh, warm air is drawn uh, into the ERV from the inside of the house. Uh, the heat is exchanged between these two streams of air inside the energy recovery ventilator. And that results in a preheated stream of warm air being introduced into the home and cooled stale air being ejected to the outside. Uh, an ERV is a very good choice in very many climates uh, from very cold conditions to 
uh, mixed dry and hot dry climates. It's less popular in humid climates because the humidity and temperature change can result in condensation inside the energy recovery ventilator. But it is a excellent device to provide uh, fresh air into an otherwise well-insulated and airtight home.